Hello and welcome to the Gem Studio demonstration video. I'm going to show you how you can create a great looking user interface extremely fast with this new tool. Today I'm going to create a refrigerator GUI from scratch. So first I'm going to select create a new Gem Studio project. So here we can select the LCD size and then we can change the manufacturing part number if we want to. Here you see we're going to clear the screen with a background color. I can change that background color here. I can type in something like blue and it'll auto populate it for me or I can go ahead and click the box and just select my color. I'm going to change it back to white. I'm just going to leave the default settings and we're presented with this canvas. I'm going to go down to the bottom left and hit the plus sign and we can add a background image. I'm going to select one that I have. I'm going to also add another image, not a background image, just a regular image. And this is my kind of taskbar at the bottom. You see up here at the top we have some alignment tools. I'm going to select align to bottom and it's just going to snap that image to the bottom. Next, um, this is a refrigerator so we need some buttons for like water, crushed and cubed ice. So I'm going to add a widget. There's several widgets to choose from. Uh, these are your control and view objects. And I'm going to select a radio button. Now this radio button has lots of parameters I don't really need and some that I do need that are missing. So I'm going to right click here and add and remove a parameter. So I don't want to label, I'll get all, rid of all the font stuff and I'm going to add empty image, full image and tracking image. So there's three images to a radio button. Now let's add those images. You can see here my font and label parameters are gone and now I have these three new ones, empty image. I've got, let's see, left one's going to be water so there's three images associated with this button. Uh, let's size it and put it over here. So I need two more. I can just select it and hit Control D to duplicate it. Now let's swap out these images. I'm going to use, let's see, crushed for the middle one. and cubed will be my right one. I'm just swapping out the images here. Alright, so now we need to line these all up. I'm going to shift to select them all. And let's, uh, let's space them evenly. Then I'm going to align them to the top of the box. And then if I hold down shift, I can align them relative to the screen. So I'm going to align them to the center and the top of the screen. Alright, now that looks good. Now, or it's a radio button, so only one of them can be on at a time, so I'm just going to put two of these to off. Alright, so now if you look here in the bottom right, we can have this run feature. Now this is going to simulate what it's actually going to look like on the hardware. And I can interact with it here, so you can see it looks exactly the same as the, d the layout tool, but now I can interact with it. Let's close that. Um, so we've got three radio buttons. Let's add, let's add another page. So I'm going to go here, let's add another, another widget, and add a function button. This is going to go, we're going to go to a lock page, so I'm going to put this over the lock. And stretch it looks good so now I'm gonna go to add remove parameter again and change out some things I don't want to label but I do want the colors I want this to be a clear button uh, and then I want alpha color so if I change the colors here I can just type things like white and it'll auto fill it in for me but I want to change the alpha channel which is the last to the last byte so if I set the last two characters to zero, 00, that makes it clear. A zero alpha transparency is clear. Now if I change the alpha color, uh, let's see, I want to make that white and about half brightness. So what this is going to do, this is a transparent button. You can see I can put it anywhere, it's transparent. But when I hit it, it's going to put this alpha color on there. 
I can simulate that. You see when I hit it, puts that that mask on top of it. So what does this button do? I want to have it jump to this lock page. So first I need that page. Let's go to the plus button again and I'm going to add a new page. I'll just go with the standard settings again. I can actually go and use the same background. So let's go to that background. I'm going to just control C to copy, control V to paste, right click, send to background. And let's do the same thing with this footer image. Control paste. So now if I hold down Alt and I use the arrow keys, I can move by 10 pixels at a time. So when I paste something, it's always 10 pixels down and 10 pixels to the right. You can see I can I can duplicate things, and it's always 10 pixels down. So if I could use the Alt key, it makes it really easy to align objects. All right, let's get rid of this. Put that to the bottom. And now this is going to be the lock page. So I need, let's see, I've got this, just this text it says locked. It's the title. And now I'm going to show you this custom control. Um, a custom control is a widget that's been pre-saved with its images and all the parameters. So in this case, I've got this slider, this unlock slider. You can see when I populated it here, it's got the name already. And um, I only see two parameters, the href and the init href. Uh, you don't see any of the images. These are actually embedded into that file. So what I can do here is make templates and easily drop these into other pages uh, wherever I might need them. So you might be asking, what is an href? If you have any questions about any of the parameters, you can always right click on them and go to the help menu. You can hit F1 or you can hit the question mark and it'll take you right to the help. So the href is the function invoked upon the event specified in, in the href event. So the href event is either on change or on release. So when we're dealing with a slider, do we want it to change every tick of the slider or just when we release our finger? In this case, it's on release. So when we release the slider, it's going to fire a set of functions. So I click it and it brings up the event method list. I'm setting here, I'm setting a byte and then I'm saying lock toggle force update. What is lock toggle? Uh, there's nothing on this page named lock toggle. So I, I need to add some page functions. This is going to be a function that gets called. So I've just got some some functions. This is going to create the, um, the pushback on the slider. So I'm going to move the handle to the right on the slider and if I don't unlock it successfully uh, it's gonna slide back to the left so let's just see if that'll do I can right click and just run this single page now if I let go before I get to the end it automatically goes back to the left alright so now I need to take this button and I've got a page to jump to so let's edit this href I can just hit tab and it's going to bring up all the available options. So I'm just going to go page 2.open. And let's hit run again. I've got a working GUI here. I hit the lock. Oh, the user interface is locked. Uh, now I can try to unlock it unsuccessfully. Now if I unlock it, it jumps right back to the main page. All right, so that is two pages of a refrigerator GUI in just a couple of minutes.